Hey, it's Ted here. I'm down on a uh, 30 foot Mako with a um, pair of 250s on it and putting new batteries and straightening out some battery switches. Uh, There's two main house batteries and then individual batteries for each individual engine. And we're going to go through the wiring of the battery switches. There's three battery switches. Um, so I'm going to show you how I wire them up. So let's take a look. Okay, so I've got um, main battery one. What we're going to do is take this to be battery one. And the output is going to go to the first engine, which would be the starboard engine. Input is from battery one. And then we're going to take input of battery switch here. And we're going to tie that engine number two of battery switch number two. And then we're going to daisy chain over to the other one. So basically what you're going to have is an individual battery for an engine, another individual battery number one for an engine, and then the house batteries for number one. And then what we can do is individually, we can take that battery or this battery or this battery, and we can combine them using selection number two. So number Okay, I got the battery switches installed, and like I said, so battery one is for the starboard engine, and if I put that on selector switch one, then it'll just run on that engine. Um, what I've done is I've daisy chained battery selector switch two, so if I took in the house batteries and I put it on both, then I would have the house batteries feeding the house, obviously, and then it would go over to battery selector switch two, which would jump over to the port engine battery selector switch two, which would then jump over to the starboard engine battery selector switch two. So if I wanted to tie the house batteries or charge the house batteries, and I only want to run one engine, I could start just the starboard engine up, put that on both, and put the house batteries on both, and then it would charge both the house batteries and it would charge that battery. So this way, you can isolate each battery by itself, leave it on battery selector switch one, or you can combine any of them using... Okay, I'm in my office and I put together a um, diagram for the battery switches in the boat. So you've got the um, individual batteries, which are tied through the battery switch to battery switch selector number one, and then the output goes to the engine, um, and then the same thing for the the port engine and then the house battery switch. So all the batteries are gonna tie into selector switch one. So the way it's laid out, um, if you wanna tie any of the batteries together, you use uh, selector switch number two. So let's say that the center you know, battery number two goes dead, um, that engine won't crank over and you wanna tie in the house batteries to crank it over. All you'd have to do is put house batteries on both selector switch and then put the battery two selector switch on two, and then that would tie the house batteries into the engine itself, and it would isolate battery number two. So what you also got to comprehend here is that the uh, battery switches themselves can also, they need to be um, uh, make before break if you want to buy the right ones. Now what that means is if you move the battery selector switch from battery one to battery two, it will make contact with battery two to the output before it disconnects battery one. A lot of the lower switches, the uh, cost-effective switches, as I put it, um, are break before make. So just fair warning, if you have that, uh, you can't change the selector switch. So those battery switches cannot be switched while the engine's running. Um, you'd have to shut the engine off, move the selector switch. So I hope this gives you a little better insight on uh, how, to, how to wire up multiple battery switches. Um, if you like the video, please subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon.